Hey what's going on guys we're back again with the ultimate resto shaman guide on how to actually be a better resto shaman in mythic plus. So yeah this is the second part of the original guide which I explained basics and rotation of resto shaman. If you haven't watched that yet I highly suggest you to give it a try and watch that first. Anyway this one is a more advanced version and I'm gonna mention some things that increase your quality of gameplay. If you're watching these guides and you're still not a part of us please do me a favor subscribe to the channel like this video and turn on the notification bell for future updates. Much appreciated. So let's go straight through the first tip. Interrupt is the biggest advantage Resto Shamans have out of all healers in WoW, and most of Resto players don't use it frequently. You can at least interrupt 30 to 50 times per run depending on your dungeon. Yes, it doesn't help with healing or dealing damage, but not everything is about heal or DPS. And good part is that interrupt ain't got any global. Interrupting frequently helps you to skip healing or not wasting a global dispelling. For example, in Halls of Atonement, as all of you may know, there are lots of casters in each pack, and there are three types of magic spells they cast. One deals the Direct damage to random targets, second one puts a curse debuff that explodes after a few seconds and last one puts a dot on someone that spawns the small units. So for example if you focus on interrupting one of the casters on cooldown you can aim for interrupting their curse debuff and you won't ever need to dispel anyone. Or you can interrupt damage cast cause they can one shot you in hard keys and you can dispel curse cause you got enough time to do that. And that's why I'm saying good interrupt matters. And if you've ever noticed in my gameplay, I don't interrupt directly. I always focus one when we're going for a pull and keep track of its casting spells by quartz add-on, which I think is very useful in this case. Mine is a bit big because I have to focus on so many things at once as a healer, so I can easily see what they're casting, but you can resize it in the way you want, but these are my settings anyway. And this is a macro I've got for interrupting focus target. You can also set a custom keybind for interrupting focus target directly in keybind tab when you hit escape. Second tip which is a life quality changer is that you can help tank pulling a second pack using your interrupt. Now, this may feel so obvious or dumb but it's not what you're thinking of or probably not all of you. I didn't mean using interrupt to aggro a mob. There's a secret rule for caster mobs that a lot of M plus new players don't know. In case you didn't know spells have cooldown for NPCs too. Some of them do and some of them don't. And they only work to you if there are melee attackers or if they run out of spells or mana. So what I meant is that if tank pulls the second pack if there's a caster among them and nobody interrupts his first cast he's gonna stay there alone and keep casting forever so what's the solution simple focus magic caster before the pull and interrupt him right after he starts casting then he runs to your tank with no effort also there's an exception to this rule hunter mobs can't be interrupted and won't run to you but there's a secret technique to make them run but somehow it's tanks duty they can easily run in their melee range and they start running and melee attacking because this was a tradition in classic wow and it got removed from hunter class. They couldn't start shooting at someone who's in their melee range but this rule still exists on hunter mobs in PvE so you can still get advantage from that. Offense is the best defense, also works for resto shamans. The reason I emphasized on damage rotation in previous guide is because good damage really matters as a healer. It may not be mentioned by other teammates but you can feel how being able to do high burst damage early when the pack is pulled helps you to skip spam healing. More specifically you have to save your earth elemental for harder parts of the dungeon where it can take part of the job and help other with insane damage and knockdowns with its earthquake effect. Another great advice I have is to use Vesper totem efficiently. It's obvious that you gotta use Vesper first global and start using charges but what if pool takes a bit longer to go down and you have Vesper up again and the pack is around 25% HP. Would you use Vesper again? My answer is yes if there are 5 or more targets still alive and no if there are fewer than 5. Because of the last trade in Forge Light Prime Soulbind which I talked about a lot in the previous guide you have to manage your Vesper totems cooldown and to try to have it in the first 10 seconds of each pack to make the most use of it. There also might might be something else you might ask and that is why do I sometimes use frost shock in my rotation after Vesper totem. First off I must tell you that frost shock is a special spell that is instant and you can use it while moving. So this might be the first reason I use it during Vesper totem because I have to move sometimes and the second reason is to do higher overall damage in lower keys like 15 plus because my team DDs are so aggressive and won't let me use my Vesper charges and most of the time they make the pack disappear in the first 15 seconds 
options. So I don't hesitate using Frost Strike instead of Chain Lightning to be able to use the full value of Vesper Totem, but don't do this in higher keys, it's not recommended from me. Frost Strike also is the easiest spell you can kill explosives with. Just create this macro and use it instead to kill explosives. It simply lets you Frost Strike your mouse over target. You can also search for a Vicaura to keep track of your Vesper charges, it's really useful. Since Resto Shaman has a high overall healing even without using big cooldowns, try not to delay using CDs, especially healing Titotem. This is why you might sometimes feel there is not enough space or free time to deal more damage as a healer. Personally, I only keep Ascendance CD. Healing Titotem is a cooldown I usually pop first when I know there is a party damage incoming and I use Spirit Link Totem to survive heavy damage phases like the giant raid mob in the other side when it starts raging. Managing cooldowns is not only about healing CDs, you also have to use your Astral Shift frequently, not when there is no reason for sure, but in some scenarios you feel like a damage phase is pretty healable and there might not be any problem, but if you actually pop your Astral Shift or anyone else in the party use defensive correctly, there might be extra space to play better. Defensive cooldowns are put in your spell bar for some reason, you know? This city is the one you usually forget that even exists. It's got short cooldown, especially if you get graceful spirit talent. Most of the time, when you're targeted by a frontal spell or if you're on its way, you'll try to dodge and using instant spells or even nothing, just moving as usual. But the right way to do it as a shaman is to pop a spirit walker, then start moving while you're casting. To practice using this city more frequently, simply get its talent and try to use and dodge any frontal spell. Those are your iconic utility spells. A great example of a shaman that plays perfect is the one that knows which mobs in each dungeon have some sort of buffs which are purgeable cause it really matters. For example, first mobs in the streets dungeon give themselves a magic buff that almost doubles their melee attack. If it's purged, it will be a lifesaver. There are two methods to use capacitor totem. Or better if I say there are two types of people on capacitor totem. First is to use it on cooldown. One early when the pack is stacked and the second one on cooldown. In this way you help the tank a few seconds early on the pack to survive and then use personal CDs. Second method is to keep cap totem and try to use it on time to cancel as many casts and spells on the pack as you can, like this one. I suggest you to play like this if you don't have anyone in the party with mass CC spells like blinding light, chaos nova, leg sweep and etc. But since we have a windwalker monk and vengeance dh in our team I try to use my cap totem more often rather than aiming to interrupt with it. Earthbind is the last one, you just communicate with your tank and use it when he is about to kite the pack. Simple. This was the second and last part of Resto Shaman and Plus Guide. I hope it was useful and makes good changes in your playstyle. I'm asking you again because it's the only way you can help my channel grow. If you've been watching and came so far and you haven't liked the video yet, please don't forget to do and subscribe to my channel. Wish you the best and we'll see you in the next one.